Okay, I'm gonna run through really quick then. Um, so we're continuing with nonlinear regression. Um, goals are the same as last time, so we're determining the best fitting function to a data set and interpreting the strength, linearity, and slope of a correlation. Okay, did just crash, so I'm reloading everything, but. Okay. Nikki, are you still black? Or can you see? Uh, still black. So I've got half of us can see, half of us can't. Um, Nikita, can you drop and rejoin? Okay. So, assuming everybody else can see, um, I've got. Um, similar to what we had last time for the homework, um, I'm going to give you several different models. So in this case, um, logarithmic, power, exponential, and linear. Um, if I wanted to know which one has the strongest correlation to the data, which number would I have to look at? The R. Okay, so R is my correlation coefficient. Um, that can tell me whether this is positive or negative for my relationship. Um, if I want to look at the strength, though, so how close the data points are, I'm actually going to look at r squared. Um, so with that, here's our r squareds for each type. Um, which one is the highest r squared? Exponential. Exponential. They're pretty close, but exponential is higher. Um, so my best model is exponential um, because we have the strongest correlation to the data. Correlation to the data. Can we say like strongest r, r squared value? Um, if you say the highest r squared, what that really means is you've got the strongest correlation to the data. Um, correlation is a um, just means Co means together, um, and then relation. So they have a relationship together. Um, in this case, our best fitting line that we picked, our best fitting curve in this case for our function, was an exponential function. So a function that keeps going up exponentially. Um, that related really well to the points. Okay. In my if we write strongest r squared, is that okay? Or we have to write like strongest correlation to data? Uh, I would prefer that you guys write the strongest correlation to the data. If you wrote that it has the highest r squared, I don't think I would count you wrong though. Okay. Um, just because later on um, in college, you guys need to interpret some of these correlation coefficients. So if you're running any kind of your own experiments later, um, this will help you explain what's going on. Um, also, even okay. if you don't do your own experiments, if you're going to read somebody else's work, you need to understand what it, what they're talking about when they say there's a really strong correlation between these two things. Okay. So then, um, our equation is y equals a b raised to the x power. Y equals. Um, our a is. 1.83 um, times 10 to the negative 11th power. And our b is 1.0147. Um, raised to the x power. OK, um, so if I wanted to convert this to a linear function, um, since this is exponential regression, I would have to take the natural log of y um, but leave x alone. Um, so I could say something like x ln y to create the graph. Um, so what we've done there is instead of graphing x and y like we did originally with our points, um, I'm going to graph x and the natural log of y instead. And you can see if I do that, um, 
I end up with more of a straight line than a curve, right? Um, so that changed all of our points. Um, since instead of doing the y value that we had originally, I'm taking the natural log of those y values and moved them all closer together. That allows us to get a best fitting line in linear form, which is really the natural log of y equals mx plus b. So slope intercept form for a line. Um, and then from last class period, we could raise both sides to a base of e. Um, to get something like this. Um, in exponential function, if I went back to graphing x in terms of y, which means this best fitting line that we found for x versus ln y is really a best fitting curve if I was going to graph x versus just y. Okay, um, if we convert it and then do another t-test, then we should end up with the same r squared that we had as long as we did it correctly. So that means all of our y values for this t-test are really the natural log of y. Okay, so my x-axis is still x values, um, but my y-axis is the natural log of our y values. Okay, the probability that this distribution could occur by random chance is our p-value, which you can see is incredibly small for this one. Wow. <laughs> um, 2.15 times 10 to the negative 19th power. Um, if I'm going to convert that to a percent, um, I'll move the decimal twice. So this would become 2.15 um, times 10 to the negative 17th power. Okay, and then I could be one minus that percent confident um, that there is a correlation. So I'm gonna say more than 99% confident. Okay, so if I needed to be 95% confident to report this in a magazine, we could report it. Right, Mr. Brendan. Yes. How should we like identify mm, when, like, we are ninety nine percent confident, would it would it be like ninety five or ninety six? Um, so I'm going to my nearest whole number here. Um, but if you do one minus your p value, um, you'll get your confidence. Oh. Um, so your p value is the chance that this could happen randomly, the chance that you would randomly get a distribution of points that are this close to an exponential function. Uh, so do we plug in the p value there? Right. So let me pull up a calculator. And we'll get the exact confidence. So um, our p value is 2.155505 um, times 10 to the negative 17 19. really because uh, 19 is as a decimal so if I convert that to a percent then that would be move the two decimal places right oh um, so that would okay. be 2.15 times 10 to the 17th power as a percent um, and then 1 minus that p-value would tell me how confident we are um, which you can see is so close, to, this p-value is so close to zero, this is actually giving me 100% confidence. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, my calculator can't even distinguish between how confident we would be in 100%. Um, but I'm going to round down because we know there is some number there to 99%. We are at least 99% okay. confident. Okay. <laughs> okay, so based on this model, um, if I wanted to say whether the correlation was positive or negative, we can look at our R. Um, so my R for this one is positive. Um, so this is a positive relationship between X and Y. Um, it is a strong relationship because our R squared is greater than 0 0.6. Um, our breakpoints for that um, are if R squared is between 0 0.6 and 0 0.4, we can say it's moderate. Um, if it's less than 0 0.4, we could say it's a weak relationship. 
um, r squared will always be between 0 and 1 because r is between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, our correlation is nonlinear um, because it is an exponential relationship. Um, so I could say, if I wanted to be really specific, this is a strong positive exponential relationship between x and y is our strongest correlation to the data. Okay. Now, as I get more and more outside the data range, we don't have any information for what would happen. Um, so if we go outside of our data range, I would expect... our predictions to be more and more wrong. So what I mean by that is um, if all the values in our data set that we use to construct this model um, were for x between 0 and 100 and for y between, we'll say, 0 and 1,000, um, if you go beyond 1,000, so let's say you take a look at what happens when y is 30,000. We don't have any information um, for what happens when y is 30,000 based on our data set. Um, so our pr prediction using our model might not be accurate. Um, I'm going to do one more all the way through, so we'll actually construct all of those tables that I've been giving you guys instead. So here I have um, the age of a star um, in comparison to our sun. So this star here is 10 times as old as the sun. This star here is our sun. <laughs> um, this star here is um, one tenth of the age of our sun. And then you can see the masses here. Um, so again, this is comparati um, comparison to our sun. Um, so this star that is 10 times as old as our sun um, is only 80% of the mass of our sun. So this star is 10 times the age of the sun. and 80% of the sun's mass. Okay, um, so we're going to try to figure out what the best model would be. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my calculator and we're going to create a list. Um, so that's stat edit. Um, under list one, I'm going to write all of our ages. Um, and then list two, I'm going to write all of our masses. Um, so this will be 10.1, 0.05, 0.01, 0.001, 0.002, 0.003, 0.004, 0.005, 0.006, 0.007, 0.008, 0.009, 0.010, 0.011, 0.012, 0.013, 0.014, 0.015, 0.016, 0.
the first time you start up. So this is second catalog and scroll to diagnostic on. Um, that gives you more information when you're doing your um, regression tests. Um, sometimes people just want to know what the function is that they can use to predict new values. Um, in that case, they wouldn't care about the R and the R squared. Um, we need that extra information to see which fit is best, um, even though it takes a little bit more time to process. Okay, so I'm going to write these down. Uh, my linear regression has an R squared of 0.1406. Okay, so linear is 0.1406. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for logarithmic. So calculate. Um, logarithmic looks like a natural log, so that's ln regression. Okay, and that has an R squared of 0 0.703. So ln is 0 0.703. I'm going to do exponential. Okay, our exponential function is 0 0.3747. Three seven four seven. All right, three seven five. Okay, um, and last one for power. Okay, my R squared is point nine four nine nine. Okay, so which one do we need to use? Um, what's my strongest regression right now? Strongest correlation to the data? Power. Power, okay. Um, so for a power function, do I need to take the natural log of x, the natural log of y, or the natural log of both? Both? Both. Okay, so for our cheat somewhere up here. Um, for linear, that's just x versus y. Um, for logarithmic, that's ln x versus y. For exponential, that's x versus ln y. Um, and for power, ln x versus ln y. Okay, so I'm going to take the natural log of both. Um, so stat edit for list 3 will be the, the natural log of x, so scroll up to the li list name, hit enter, and then natural log of list 1 is all of our x values. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for list 4. Scroll up, hit enter, natural log of our list 2 values. So now I've got list 3 is natural log of my x, list 4 is natural log of my y's. Okay, then hit stat. I'm going to go to tests and linear regression t-test. using list 3 for x and list 4 for y. So it's the natural log x and the natural log of y. And calculate. Okay, so that gives us the p-value, which we can use to get the confidence that there is a relationship between these two variables, um, as well as um, the equation that I would need. Again, this is really natural log y and natural log x. Um, so I'd have to rewrite that in order to get a power function. Um, but that r squared, does match, which tells me I did everything correct up to this point. So do we make like two new lists for the natural log? Um, yes, yeah, so if you get a power function, you need two new lists. Um, if you get a logarithmic or exponential function as your best fit, then you only need one new list. So that would be the natural log of x or the natural log of y. If you get a linear function, you don't need a new list. You can just use x and y. <clears throat> Wait, at what situation do we need to go to look for the log of x and the log of y? Um, so if you're not doing a linear function, 